Something like that. But it's super useful stuff and super intriguing for, I would contend, almost anybody out there. And let me start with posing you a question. Are you in the market to buy something big in the near future? Mikey's got a, a wonderful significant other whom we've never met. She may or may not be real. We, no, we don't has, know. I have a lot to push back on. OK, you say I don't <laughs> know anything of uh, the president. I haven't seen the slides. I think I'm okay with the topic of hedging cool, interest rates. Cool. And and Pete Momat, our good friend and colleague, has met my wonderful girlfriend. So she is indeed real. She's not fictitious. Uh, so everyone <laughs> could have been there, an actor. Could have been an actor. Fact, fact check. Uh, but yes, absolutely. Uh, always in the market to buy something big if the price is right. Tell me more, Frank. <laughs> Well, so this is something that me and a lot of my friends are going through. And I think people of, you know, an age maybe greater than, I don't know, an age doesn't really matter, but like a maturity greater than, you know, 25 to 30 are are constantly thinking about like, oh, I have this home or I have this car or I'm I, I'm going to be my first uh, first time uh, buying a home or it's going to be my first time buying a car. And interest rates are usually baked into this process unless you're super rich, dude, that's just laying down cash for everything. Um, interest rates are going to be baked into this process. And it's something that uh, for those experienced people out there, they know all too well. But for myself, someone who hasn't bought you know, a home hasn't, hasn't bought a car, but thankfully has come up in financial markets. I understand the fact that interest rates are very low right now. And they, by all accounts, today's movement aside and what Fed Chair Powell has said uh, today, uh, given uh, pushing aside all that short-term movement in the medium to long-term, they're likely to move higher off of these lows. And so you think to yourself, like, if I'm going to buy a home and I need to take out a loan to, you know, pay for the entirety of that home, there's going to be an interest rate involved. And if I'm not doing so today with 10-year rates and 30-year rates near uh, all-time lows, I'm doing it in six months from now. Well, between now and then, those rates could move higher. Like This is a fear that I, I think is very real in a ton of people. And I'm sure you are a little bit privy to as well, being around markets and maybe thinking about potentially buying a place or a car in the near future. Absolutely. Uh, It's something that I think a lot of people overlook and is a really neat use case of direct pure play interest rate futures at the small exchange. One of the reasons being, and we bring this up because when you purchase a, you know, a big item, you're some most often going to have to finance it and the rate attached to whatever financing you get is directly tied to these treasury interest rates that the small exchange products track. So, I mean, you look at a 30 year mortgage rate is like two and a half percent. If 10 year interest rates move higher or two years or 30 years, that mortgage rate is also going to move higher. So we're talking about a direct rate relationship between a home financing cost or big purchase financing costs and treasury costs. That's exactly right. Like it's different. It's a different rate. Absolutely. When you're buying, you know, you know, uh, mortgage-backed security, like like th- these rates are different than treasury rates. Absolutely, they're going to be most likely higher. Uh, if you mm-hmm. get a lower rate, let me know. But um, th- th- they're going to be a little bit higher. But just like you said, Mikey, like everything is tied to this benchmark of the ten-year. Like almost every loan here in the U.S., from cars to to um, to to mortgages to to student loans and everything else, is going to be somehow tied to this with the the idea in mind that like, okay, if a 30 year uh, mortgage rate is like two and a half percent and 10 years right now are at 1.3%, then if 10 years go from 1.3% to 2%, that mortgage rate is likely gonna go from two and a half to three or three and a half or even 4%. Mm -hmm. They're gonna move up and down in tandem. And this can freak some people out, especially when you tell them we're at a historical low in uh, in rates, a lot of people will be like, oh, well, I need to buy right now. Like if I was going to buy in six months from now or a year from now, I need to apply this, this small, this historical low in rates sooner rather than later. And what you can do is you can hedge that movement in rates in the meantime, 
and take your time buying something big as you mm-hmm. almost definitely should because it is something big there. And so you can use this benchmark for these different loan types as a hedge for between now and when you're going to actually buy something. And I did a bunch of math yesterday. I had to call our mutual friend, Peter Momat, who has bought many big things in his long life and has also traded many interest rates in foreign exchange markets and everything else. And we did a bunch of math and we arrived to this number, which isn't perfect. There's a lot of assumptions baked in here, but one S10Y contract is equivalent to about $5,000 in loan amounts. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I intend on taking, you know, $50,000 worth of, uh, you know, mortgage, whatever loan uh, type in six months from now, I can hedge that with about 10 S10Y contracts buying those 10. And so an increase in interest rates between now and then should actually hedge out when I finally take that loan out in six months from now, the increase in rates between now and then that I'll pay for potentially the next 10 or 30 years down the line, uh, you can buy these S10Y futures to hedge rises in rates between now and when you buy and take your time and, and feel comfortable with that. Does this all make sense to you? Yeah, this is really an interesting use case. Uh, you're using the future for really what futures were created for yeah. hundreds of years ago is hedging. Um, I guess the relationship between the notional value of S10Y and the $5,000 in loan amount has something to do with like loan duration and convexity. There's like some weird <laughs> financial math behind there. Sure. I'm going to take you at face value and say these are, <laughs> these are spot on. Um, but yeah, the assumptions great. there are 30 years worth of uh, a loan there. And yeah, there are okay. some assumptions like if interest rates do rise by a wild degree, I think you need less yield exposure uh, via the, the, the 10 year futures here. It, there are some assumptions in there, but this is a good baseline to get you started in hedging your interest rates relative to something that you might buy in a few months, might buy in a few years, you can lock in or at least, you know, get around locking in these low rates by buying the yield futures here at the lows. Really cool. I mean, we talked at the beginning of the show about people going back to college. College is often synonymous with student loans, at least in my situation. So, perfect use case there as well for folks wanting to lock in some rates. Yeah, we got real practical here on Friday afternoon. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope everybody has some kind of use case for it because we've seen you and I, as we handle a lot of the social media presence and a lot of like the email presence behind the small exchange, we've seen plenty of people who hold a significant amount of long uh, treasury yield exposure for just like personal reasons. Um, so I don't think that this is 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 crazy by any means. I hope some people maybe think about these things uh, because I've been thinking about it recently in my own personal life. And the last thing you want to do is feel rushed into doing mm-hmm. something that is a big decision like that. But anyways, Mikey, thanks so much for joining me here on Friday afternoon. I think you probably have some big decisions in front of you, such as what tacos you're going to eat. What kind of tacos did you get here on Taco Friday? Oh, that's correct. I got beer battered cauliflower. I got shrimp and grits, which I'm keen to try. And I got some fried fish, something. So yeah. Oh, whole eclectic variety of tacos. Very excited very, to dig in. Very cool. And our, our our intern Glenn, his his favorite he picked the place because he's in love with <laughs> this chicken and waffle taco that this place does. <laughs> he won't shut up about it, uh, much to the chagrin of our other coworkers who don't want tacos again. But it's Glenn's day. We're gonna go enjoy some tacos. Mikey, I'll be there to celebrate with you in just a little bit. But I do have Splash into Futures coming up next. Pete Momat and I are going to dive into the platform and cook up some Friday afternoon trades. Uh, Tune in, everybody. Thanks for watching.